The living room smelled like someone had drowned a skunk and left its corpse in a pile of gym socks. Inches from the ceiling, smoke lingered like a thick white fog over everyone's heads. Floating in the shadows, the cloud appeared stationary and motionless. But as it passed the purple beam of the black light mounted on the wall, it transformed, swirling and twirling into itself like a psychedelic tapestry of corkscrews and spirals. There was a horror movie called Murder Dome playing on the TV, but nobody was watching it. Instead, nearly every saggy bloodshot eye in the room was trained on the trippy spectacle hovering in the air before them. Only Jerry's attention was elsewhere. He was kneeling at the dinged-up wooden coffee table in front of the couch, putting the finishing touches on the joint that he'd been rolling. Once it was packed tight enough, he sealed it shut, flipped the button to his mouth, and then swept the loose stems onto the floor. Anyone got a light? he asked. No one replied, and when he glanced up towards his friends, he realized just how baked everyone was. Anu, for instance, had become one with the couch. He had melted so far into its pillows that it was impossible to tell where human being ended and the sofa's cushions began. Liz, who'd been wearing the same ratty sweatsuit for the past three days, was curled up on the other side of the sofa. Her mind drifting aimlessly through a mythical world of rainbows, unicorns, and grinning kitty cats that spoke in rhymes and riddles. Jerry turned his attention to the hefty stoner that was stretched out on the recliner next. He had thought Spud was asleep, so it came as a surprise, but he managed to make eye contact with him. Before he was able to repeat the question, Spud lifted his arm a few millimeters off of his lap and extended a limp finger towards the cedar box on the table. Check the stash box, man. Jerry nodded in appreciation. He'd only been hanging out with these guys for a few weeks, but at the time he'd come to realize they were even bigger potheads than him. That was fine, though. He'd just moved into the city, and it was nice to make friends who shared his favorite hobby of getting really blitzed and passing out in front of the TV. He couldn't think of a more appropriate way to ring in his birthday. At midnight, he'd been entering his 28th year, and all he had to show for it was a low-level IT job working for a tech company that paid him just well enough to make rent on a crummy one-bedroom apartment. He had studied hard in school, gotten a degree, and yet when he looked himself in the mirror, all he saw was a failure, with no more prospects than the washouts he was currently hanging with. The American dream he had been promised was bullshit. The white picket fence, smiling wife, and beautiful children who looked like they were ripped straight out of a Hallmark card were lies. But Pot helped him forget all about that, which is why he spent as much time as he could baked off his ass. Jerry reached around a bong that hadn't been cleaned in weeks, grabbed the box with the words not weed scrawled across it in Sharpie, then rummaged around inside until he found what he was looking for. There was nothing special about the lighter at a glance. It was plastic and vaguely rectangular with rounded edges and no distinct markings of any kind. He'd used lighters like it a million times before. They were sold at every gas station, liquor store, and supermarket checkout line in the United States. This one was white, which was a little less common than other colors, but it was still far from the first time he'd seen one in the wild. Nothing about it raised any sort of alarms, but when he gave the spark wheel a flick with his thumb, he drew in a sharp breath of disbelief. Perhaps the room's ultraviolet light was playing a trick on his eyes, or maybe he was just really high, but for some strange reason he couldn't understand. The flame that had risen from the top of the lighter he was holding in his hand was an unfathomably deep black. There was something sinister about it. He was magnificent, yet dreadful, like staring into the vastness of the cosmos. And he found himself so mesmerized by it that it took a few moments to realize the flame was slowly roasting his thumb. When the pain signals finally did register in his brain, he slipped the joint between his lips and then raised the strange lighter towards his mouth. No! The shout had frozen him in his tracks. Jerry glanced towards the couch just in time to see Anush lunging across the table at him, teeth clenched and nostrils flaring. Anush slapped the lighter from his hand and tackled him to the floor, where the two wrestled, rolling over crumpled paper bags and plastic cups stamped with fast food logos, until Jerry was able to shake himself free. 
He checked the joint to see if it had been damaged in the scuffle, and let out a sigh of relief once he confirmed it was smokable, and then threw his hands in the air. What the hell, dude? But Anuj was too busy mumbling to himself while searching the floor to acknowledge Jerry's complaint. A few muffled curse words later, he let out a triumphant cry and snatched the lighter off the ground. Aha! Once he had what he was looking for, he stood up and glared at Spud. His eyes were as red as a baboon's ass and could only open about halfway. But even so, Jerry could see a glint of panic in them. Did you put the lighter in the stash box? Anuj asked. No way, man, said Spud. I haven't seen that thing for a week. Last time I had it, I threw it over the fence in the backyard. You know what? You know that won't work, snapped Anuj. He spun around. What about you, Liz? Liz took the biggest rip from her dab ring that Jerry had ever seen, then blew a massive cloud towards the ceiling that merged like an amoeba with the one already in the air. Delicately, she placed her high-tech, battery-powered vaporizer on the floor, then turned a blank stare towards the others. I'll have tacos if you're picking up food, she said. Jerry placed the joint behind his ear, then to get everyone's attention, clapped his hands together as loud as he could. The, the sound caused Anush and Spud to jerk, as if a bolt of electricity had just coursed through them. Liz, on the other hand, only sunk deeper into the couch, a distant smile on her face. What the hell is the deal with the lighter? He demanded. And why did you tackle me to the ground? Jerry, tomorrow's your birthday, right? Asked Anish. How old are you turning? I'll be 28 at midnight. What the hell does that have to do with anything? There was a long moment of silence. After that, the only sound filtering into the room, coming from the movie and the television, which was playing a particularly violent scene where a man was being impaled by a cyborg with a bow tie. Finally, Spud spoke up. Holy shit, he almost died, dude. You can't use the lighter, Andrew said. It's cursed. Another hush now washed over the room as Jerry began to wonder just how much weed his friends had burned through before he had shown up that night. How high are you? he asked. Higher than an eagle's nutsack, said Anish. But that doesn't change the fact that this lighter is cursed. It's true, man, moaned Spud. He swiped at Anish with a lethargic wave of his hand. Should tell him if he's going to be coming over to smoke. I don't want Jerry to die. That granddaddy purple he brought with him had me seeing God. Jerry burst into a fit of laughter. The laughs were coming on so hard that his abdomen cramped up and he doubled over in pain. He grabbed his sides and rolled backward onto the rug while the others, even Liz, watched him whoop and howl on the floor. He couldn't help himself. The thought was too ridiculous. Plus, he was already stoned, so that wasn't helping the giggles pass either. After it felt like an eternity, the cramping started to subside, and once he was through the worst of it, he sat back up and wiped the tears from his eyes. You've got to be kidding me, he said. Nobody was laughing, though, and he noticed a particular aura had settled over the room ever since the lighter had made its appearance. Anuj flicked the lighter, groaned when he saw its jet black flame emerge from the tip, then flopped himself back down to the couch. It's like this, he said to Jerry. We used to have another roommate at this house, Tommy. He was a great dude to know because he was always flush with weed. Plus, he didn't mind making food runs and people got the munchies. Is someone going to pick up tacos? Asked Liz. Tommy was good to us, said Spud, while throwing up the sign of the devil for no reason in particular. He was good to us, confirmed Anuj. But not to his customers. See, he sold weed to college kids at the campus down the road. After a while, he began ripping them off. You know the game. Nug here, half gram there. At the end of the week, he'd pool it all together and have a fat smoke session in his customer's dime. Then, one day, he gets a call. Some chick who said she got his number from one of his regulars. She asks if she could buy some weed, so gives her our address, tells her to swing by. What's her name again? Asked Spud. Flamingo or chicken or something. It was Raven, you idiot. Close enough, said Spud. They had the bird thing right. Anyway, she was carrying some really bad vibes when she walks in. Everyone could feel it. Total buzzkill, you know what I mean? Jerry didn't know what Anuj meant, but he nodded his head anyway. So she wanted to smoke with us. But Tommy 
told her a little white lie, and said that we were all about to go grab some grub. Liz sat up in her chair, eyes sparkling. Is someone picking up tacos? Not now, Liz, shouted Amish. Tommy handed her an eighth baggie. She kind of waited in her hands like this. He held up the lighter in front of him in his palm. She knew he was ripping her off, said Jerry. Anish shot a finger gun his way. Bingo. Got cocky. Tommy was skimping people too much. It was only a matter of time before he got called out. So what happened? He tried to apologize. Even offered her an extra gram on the house. But she wasn't having it. And that's when she got this wicked look in her eye. Threw her head back and started cackling. She pulled the lighter out of her purse. Now Anish was raising the lighter over his head as though it were a magic wand. She mumbled something in Latin, or Aramaic, I don't know, it could have been Klingon, I don't really know. Then she said, may the black flame snuff out your life. And that's when the fire started, said Spud. Fire? asked Jerry, finally intrigued. Like she unleashed demons and like hell spawns on you guys? Not quite like that, said Anish. It was more like she flicked the lighter on and kind of waved it at all of us for a few seconds. Oh said Jerry. And then she left, tossed the lighter to Tommy, walked out the door, didn't even take her weed, said Spud. But that's not the end of the story. Anish leaned forward in his chair to make sure Jerry was paying attention to this part. We all laughed her crazy ass off, but those bad vibes? Still there. You can feel them in your bones. A few minutes later, Tommy got a call from someone at the dorms looking to pick up a sack. Grabs his weed, snags a pre-roll for the road, pockets the lighter, bounces. He told us he'd be back in half an hour. We get a knock on the door late that night. When I open it up, there was a cop standing on the porch. I almost shit my pants because I hadn't ate the shrooms in my pocket. We just finished smoking a fat-ass blunt. Whoa, said Jerry. Did they arrest you? The cop wasn't there for us. He said he came to tell us Tommy had been killed in a car accident on his way to the dorms. Got T-boned at an intersection while he was lighting up. Didn't even survive the drive to the hospital. The cops gave me a garbage bag full of his stuff. There was like bloody clothes, busted CDs, a couple of magazines. They kept the weed, grumbled Spud. Fucking A they did. And last but not least, at the bottom of the bag was this white lighter. Same one that witch Raven cursed us with. He flicked it on again, and Jerry could see its black flame. Sorry your roommate died, said Jerry. That's really awful, but I don't understand why you think the lighter had anything to do with it. Have you ever heard of the 27 Club? asked Anish. Jerry shook his head. There's a list of rock stars who all kick the bucket at age 27, said Spud. Anish started counting names off on his fingers. Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain, Amy Winehouse. Don Henley, said Spud. Don Henley's not dead, you idiot, grunted Anish. But here's the thing. All the celebrities of the 27 Club, they were reported to have used a white lighter shortly before their untimely demise. Tommy was 27, and so was everyone in this room. This raven chick heard the rumor, too, and decided to mess with you. <laughs> Left Jerry. That's what we thought, but check it out. Anish reached for a High Times magazine, sitting on the table, and began flipping through the pages. Once he found what he was looking for, he folded the magazine back and pointed to a picture in an article about Jim Morrison. In the photo, Morrison was leaving a nightclub. On his arm was a pretty woman with black hair and a fair complexion. That's her, said Anish. That's Raven. That's the witch that cursed us. Jim Morrison died a few weeks after this picture was taken. There was a white lighter in the room with him when he passed. Guess how old he was. Jerry studied the picture. You're saying the woman who came to buy weed from you is really a... 70-year-old witch that killed Jim Morrison? She's easily over 100. The first member of the 27 Club was the blues musician Robert Johnson. He died in 1938. There aren't any photos of them together, but there are photos of her with other members. We googled all night, found her linked to a ton of people on that list. 
Our guess is she's personally responsible for the deaths of every member of the 27 Club, and she used this white lighter to kill them. Why would a witch who kills celebrities waste her time on you guys? Because she's a bitch, shouted Anish. She probably curses anyone with that lighter who pisses her off. Who knows how many 27-year-olds have croaked after using it? We just hear about the famous ones. The weed's making you guys paranoid, said Jerry. Think about what you're saying. Your roommate dies. You fall down some conspiracy rabbit hole? Tommy wasn't the only one who died, said Spud. Anish smirked. Then he continued his story. About two weeks later, we're at the Get Rip Music Festival when we meet up with Spud's old college buddies from before he dropped out. These guys were absolutely tripping by the time he caught up with them. X, Coke, Ketamine, you name it. One of them, this guy named uh, Bruce, he pulls out a blunt, asks for a light, so Spud does what any self-respecting, courteous dude would do. Reaches into his fanny pack for some fire, lights that mother up. It was only after Bruce's blunt had a solid cherry going that any of us noticed Spud used the white lighter. In my defense, man, I had taken a ton of edibles, said Spud. Nobody else packed the lighter either. I know because I double-checked this fanny pack when we got to the festival. It wasn't in there. But somehow, Spud had lit this dude Swisher with it. So he's chiefing. We're all kind of just sitting around nervously waiting for something to happen. Thought he was going to hit by... I thought he was going to get hit by a car, said Spud. Anish let out a disappointed sigh. We were at a music festival. How, how, how the hell was he going to get by a car? What actually happened is this. About halfway through his blunt, Bruce starts rubbing his temples and complaining about his vision going blurry, right? So it first seems like he's just having a bad trip, but then his face turns purple. We know something's wrong when he falls to the ground and starts foaming at the mouth. He was unconscious by the time the paramedic showed up. They spent a half hour trying to revive him, but eventually they just pronounced him dead. They said he had a seizure. At the ripe old age of 27. But there's no doubt. The lighter had killed him. Killed my high too, man, said Spud. Jerry shook his head. That guy was rolling on Molly and Coke and who knows what else. His body probably couldn't handle everything he was putting in it. But he only died after using the lighter, protested Anush. If it's so dangerous, why don't you just get rid of it? We tried, said Spud. But it keeps coming back. Think we'd just leave that thing in the stash box for you to find? It's true, said Anish. A few nights after the festival, we decided to drive up into the hills to scatter Tommy's ashes, get rid of the lighter. A uh, kill two birds with one stone kind of thing. There's this scenic overlook that we all used to smoke at. You know, should get high up there sometime. Majestic as fuck. Well, there's a cliff that drops straight down. You can see the whole valley from up there. Really makes you contemplate how insignificant we all are in the world. Does anyone want to go pick up tacos? Said Liz. When we got there, we emptied Tommy's urn over the ledge. Then I chucked the lighter as hard as I could. And that sucker must have sailed 200 feet before we lost track of it in the darkness. Afterwards, we got back to the car, decided to roll up. And guess what was waiting for us in the glove box? Jerry shrugged. Maybe it was a different white lighter. Or maybe it's cursed, man, said Spud. If you're so afraid of using it accidentally, then why don't you just pull down the fork until it runs out of fuel? You don't think we tried that too? Anish held up a bandaged thumb. It doesn't run out. Which would be hella convenient if it wasn't for the whole kill you if you use it thing, said Spud. And it will kill you, replied Anish. Remember what happened to Polly? Liz was with her at the vape shop when she used it. He turned to Liz, waiting for her to begin the story, but she was too enthralled with what was happening on the TV to notice. I want to pooch you, she said. You look so soft and snuggly. She took another rip from her dab ring and again blew out an impossibly big cloud, then sunk back into her chair and closed her eyes. Within seconds, she was snoring. Liz was getting off her shift to the vape shop when her co-worker Polly walked in with a gram of Northern Lights, 
said Anish. Once it was clear, Liz wasn't waking up anytime soon. It's kind of slow, and she was trying to get lifted before work, but she didn't have anything to smoke it with. Luckily, Liz had her pipe with her. So she told Polly to snag it off the counter when she locked up and to meet her on the back. By the time she caught up with her, Polly was already puffing away. She passed it off to Liz to take a hit, and that's when she noticed Polly had been using the white lighter. When she asked where she'd gotten it, Polly told her it was next to the pipe. So what happened? asked Jerry. Did she drop dead in the parking lot like that other guy? She got shot, man, said Spud. Yep, said Anish. It was a closing shift. Ten minutes before she was about to shut down, some crackhead came in for a smash and grab, but he was strapped. Plugged her four times before cleaning out the register. Poor girl was only 27 years old. Christ! Why? I don't know, Anish shrugged. Because he was a paranoid tweaker? Also because of the white lighter, said Spud. Oh yeah, because of that too. Hang on, said Jerry. It's a wild story, but it it's hardly evidence. Your roommate got into a car accident, which is pretty common. The dude at the festival had how many drugs in his system before his brain spazzed out? Six, said Spud, from my count at least. And as far as Liz's co-worker goes, that's a really tragic, but... Sometimes stuff like that happens, especially when you work in seedy vape shops in the wrong side of town. Whatever, dude, grinned Anish. He slipped the lighter into his sweatpants. You don't have to believe us, but I did save your ass earlier. Jerry nodded his head. You know, there is one solution to your white lighter problem, he said. You guys could quit smoking. Fuck that, man, said Spud. I'd rather that witch set me on fire. Spud and I are going to pick up some food. You want to roll with us? Anish asked. Jerry checked his phone and saw it was already 11.55 p.m. No thanks. I think I'm going to smoke this joint and go home. I got work in the morning. I'll probably be gone by the time you guys get back. Anish and Spud lumbered out of their seats and made their way towards the door. Well, if I don't see you tomorrow, have a happy birthday, said Anish. And lock the door on your way out. Jerry got up off the floor and made himself comfortable on the couch. Hey, Liz, he said. Want to smoke? Her only reply was a snore. And when he looked over at her, he could see that she was still fast asleep. He rifled through the stash box again, searching for something to light his joint with, found a purple lighter with a dragon and a yin-yang on it, flicked the switch, then grumbled when all that came out were sparks. Son of a bitch is dead. He searched the table next, fumbling with magazines, peeking in fast food bags, hoping to uncover a hidden matchbook, Zippo, anything to light his joint with. But he couldn't find a thing. There had to be another working lighter laying around the room somewhere. He checked the couch, sliding his hand between the pillows, blindly hunting for a lighter that might have gotten lost in the deep, dark void beneath the sofa cushions. Finally, his fingers brushed up against a familiar, rectangular shape, and he let out a celebratory, Fuck yeah! He pulled it free and chuckled once he realized what he was holding. In his hand was the white lighter. It must have slipped out of Anish's pocket when he got up to leave. Either that, or... No, said Jerry to himself. The stupid lighter isn't cursed. He checked his phone again and saw that it was already past midnight. Happy birthday to me, he thought. Even if the lighter was cursed, it wouldn't matter anyway. He'd been 28 for a whole three minutes. Jerry flicked it on and watched the pitch black spire rise once again from the top of it. He had to admit it was pretty cool. He thought it would make a great conversation piece if he pulled it out to use at a party. Maybe he would keep it. It's not like his friends wanted anything to do with it. They'd probably be happy if he took it off their hands. He brought the fire to the end of his joint, paused one last time to admire the mysterious flame... And then he lit it up. Smoke filled his lungs, followed soon after by a burn so intense his whole chest felt like it was on fire. A cough rose up from his throat and then another, and within seconds he was hacking so hard his eyes had started to water. His body convulsed, his face twisted into a painful scowl. The granddaddy purple was some chronic stuff. But Jerry hadn't choked this hard on a joint since he was 15 years old. 
Once he was finally through the worst of it, he threw himself back in his seat and took in a few frenzied gasps for air. Jerry gazed up at the cloudy haze still hovering over the room and decided he was way too high to operate a vehicle anytime soon. The smoke wasn't just dancing in the black light. It appeared to be condensing, forming itself into a shape in the middle of the living room that was looking more and more like a figure of a human. This is weird, he groaned to himself. Moments later, that smoky figure resembled a fully formed woman. She looked like a ghost, her body and face was transparent, but Jerry could still make out enough details to realize she was staring at the woman from the magazine that Anush had shown him. She sneered at him with a venomous hatred in her eyes. You're not real, Jerry said. I I'm just really stoned. His heart was beating like a drum and he could feel cold beads of sweat running down the back of his neck. In his hand, he was clutching the white lighter so tight his fingers were tingling. Jerry glanced over to Liz, hoping she'd woken up, but she was still snoring away. He turned back to the smoky apparition, praying that she'd be gone, only to let out a tiny yelp of panic, and he saw that not only was she still there, but she was gliding through the air towards him. In a desperate attempt to fight back, he cocked his arm and flung the lighter at the witch. It flew through the air, passing right through the woman's chest, then clinking against the TV screen and fell to the floor. The witch was right in front of him now, her sneer even more warped and twisted than before. She reached a hand towards his face. He swiped at it a couple of times in a last-ditch effort to protect himself, causing her arm to disperse in a tuft of smoke, only for it to reform in short order an inch ever closer towards him. But it's my birthday, he squealed. I'm not 27 anymore. The witch pulled back. The hatred in her eyes replaced with a look of confusion. They stared at each other in awkward silence for a second before she opened her mouth to speak. The words rolled off her lips like a discordant melody plucked from the chords of a harp in the fiery pits of hell. Wait, you thought the curse only worked on 27-year-olds? What kind of stoner logic is that? It was in that moment Jerry realized that his friends were idiots. He tried to plead for mercy, but as soon as he opened his mouth, her smoky form rushed into it. She poured down his esophagus up through his nostrils, forcing him to gag and choke even worse than last time. His throat screamed with pain. It felt as if there were fingernails scratching at the inside of it. Once more, he found himself desperate to take in oxygen. Jerry writhed in his seat as the witch forced her entire essence inside of him. He punched and kicked in the air, doing everything he could to rid himself of the smoky woman. But the more he struggled... The heavier his limbs got, and the more his lungs felt like they were just going to explode into his chest. How long had it been since he had taken a breath? Seconds? Minutes? Each horrible, agonizing moment seemed to stretch on endlessly. Before long, his vision began to fade, and his thoughts started to turn from desperation to hopeless acceptance. He threw his head back in his chair and allowed the pain to take him as his heart beat for the last time. Smoke trickled from the mouth and nose of Jerry's corpse and floated back up towards the ceiling of the living room. The house was silent again, save for the sounds of the movie still playing on the television. Liz's eyes fluttered open. She yawned as she stretched in her seat like a cat. The first thing she noticed was that Spud and Anuj were gone. The second thing she noticed was that there was something very wrong with Jerry. He wasn't moving despite his eyes being wide open, a panic-stricken look of terror frozen on his face. Jerry didn't react when she nudged him with her foot, so she kicked him harder, causing him to slump over onto the corner of the sofa. It didn't take long to realize what had happened once she spotted the half-smoked joint on the table and the white lighter on the ground in front of the television. Slowly, Liz reached for her phone searched for Anuj and her contacts, then typed out a text, taking great care that he understood exactly what she was trying to tell him. Hey, if you're out, can you pick me up some tacos?
Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thanks so much for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast if you happen to be listening to this as a podcast or as a YouTube or however else you managed to have found this story for tonight. And as always, I would love to give a big thank you to everyone who's supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs, you guys keep things going, especially while things have been nuts for me over the past couple of months and things have been getting crazier and crazier as time goes on, you guys are the ones who are keeping me sane. And I mean that with all sincerity, that you guys have helped me immensely. <laughs> so, in my personal life and my professional life, I want to give a very big thank you to... Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fenske, Chance Vernon, Diana Krauss, Lakeda Canizales, Mr. Green Foster, Pettis Weezer, Gattis, Joseph Calarudo, Rudy B, Dante Kincaid, Town 803, Mephistopheles, Curse Pox Priorc, Bastion Beefcake, Jeff Joey's Cultist, Love You MMM, M, Insanity Gamer X, Jesus Corneo, Yargul, Amber Cork, Jay Kearns, Himbo Jerry, Sam High, Crusader Chocobo, Adam Arias, Captain Scurvy, Estabine, Raven Morris, Nate Cull, Our Min Sec Time, Angelus, Seclude, That Creepy Chick, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier and Cheyenne, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Cryolinian, Lord Life's Best, Goring Tri Magazine, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Michael Inchok, Dirk Diver 030, Matt Bach, Voice of Sam, Kelly J, Bacamel, The Leader Count, Melted Lake, Holly Sue, William King, Sashi Sasaku, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday, Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Peter Chip, Acid System. Mog, Kiwi the Sloth, Bester's Lampshade, Nico Kyle, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey Kenshin. To everyone on this list, everyone in the description, and of course anyone who could support even just one dollar, thank you all so much for making my life significantly easier with this. And if you guys would like to be able to join any of the names that you see here, or down there, or anything at all, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And with that, I wish you all a very, very pleasant night, and sweet dreams.